Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything think it's Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, maybe your week isn't going so preem right now since a lot of us just lost an hour of sleep, at least in the United States, due to the yearly abomination known as daylight savings time when we lose an hour of sleep. So, on that subject, more and more people are realizing just how important sleep is to our overall good health. There is no controversy about that whatsoever. So, that is why today I would like to address a very important question that a lot of us have. Does finasteride harm your sleep? Does it cause sleep disorders like insomnia, as some people claim on hair loss forums? Well, that of course is a completely valid question, Chooms. So let's go ahead and take our patented balls deep dive into the subject of finasteride and sleep. Well, first of all, is there any evidence that finasteride is associated with sleep disturbances? Well, usually, whenever I want to look up finasteride misinformation online, the first person I turn to is the PFS Network and Tressless' favorite finasteride hater of all time, Dr. Trash. Surprisingly, though, he doesn't mention problems with sleep as a side effect in his very notorious article titled, quote, Health risk associated with long-term finasteride and dutasteride use. It's time to sound the alarm, unquote. In case you want to know what I think about that particular article, I'll go ahead and post the video I made where I responded to it below. So, with even Dr. Trash not promoting the concept of finasteride causing sleeping disorders, it really makes me wonder where the connection between finasteride and sleep comes from. So, I went ahead and I took a good look, and I did find one source, which is this article right here, which appeared as just an abstract from 2020. This abstract looks at whether there is an association between finasteride and a sleep disorder called obstructive sleep apnea. Apnea, for those who don't know, just means stopping breathing, which as you can imagine is a pretty serious condition. In obstructive sleep apnea, people have periods during sleep when they stop breathing briefly, which can result in serious health problems. In this abstract, the authors admit that, quote, to our knowledge, there are no reports of obstructive sleep apnea with finasteride, unquote. So that is, of course, reassuring, but that isn't where things end here, Chooms. So to see if there is any link between finasteride and sleep problems, the authors searched what's called the FAERS database. That's F-A-E-R-S FAERS. And they did that for reports of sleep problems from finasteride use. So the FAERS database is basically just an online database where patients and doctors can report possible side effects from drugs. It's also what's called a non-curated database, meaning anyone can report anything and there is no attempt to establish a cause and effect. So theoretically, you could report that finasteride made your anus numb and it would appear in this particular database. If the FAERS database sounds familiar to you all, it is because there is another very similar database called the VAERS database, where people can report supposed vaccine side effects. Unfortunately, after COVID-19, it is pretty much impossible to put any trust in that particular database because it was absolutely overwhelmed with unsubstantiated reports of vaccine side effects. Similarly, the FAERS database is suspect because it is biased by bogus reports of people reporting symptoms of post-finasteride syndrome, which is a fake QAnon big pharma conspiracy theory promoted mostly by the alt-right intellectual dark web of fedora-wearing neckbearded incels, and I made an entire video series of videos on that fake condition that I'll go ahead and link below. Anyways, when the authors of the study searched the database for sleep problems in people taking finasteride, they found an increased risk of obstructive sleep apnea with finasteride versus other medications. Specifically, they found 145 cases of obstructive sleep apnea out of 61,490 individual safety reports of people on finasteride versus 11,390 reports of obstructive sleep apnea out of 27,680,268 individual safety reports of people on other drugs. This works out to be an average of 5.7 times the risk of obstructive sleep apnea with finasteride versus other drugs. So, looking at the absolute risk of obstructive sleep apnea, though, it appears to be very, very small. 145 out of 61,490 is a risk of just 0.2%. But this is not the risk for everyone taking finasteride. It's only the risk out of the number of people who actually had any side effects from finasteride at all and who actually bothered to even report it. Also, there are probably people who reported having obstructive sleep apnea who were on finasteride and the sleep apnea had nothing to do with the finasteride 
finasteride usage at all. So this risk of getting obstructive sleep apnea on finasteride is probably much, much lower than 0.2%, which is already extremely low to begin with. Of course, I know what most of you guys want to know about is insomnia, and don't worry, the authors covered this subject too. The authors used the same methodology to estimate that the risk of insomnia was 1.7 times higher with finasteride compared to other drugs. So obviously, this is really not strong data at all, but of course, groups like the PFS network like to broadcast a study like this to prove that finasteride causes all sorts of problems with sleep as a means of advancing their litigious agenda against the manufacturers of finasteride. But as is often the case with people who claim suppressing DHT causes problems, it turns out that the opposite ends up being true, and that is exactly the case when it comes to the subject of finasteride and sleep problems, and that is because, as it turns out, Chooms, the evidence shows that it isn't finasteride that causes sleep problems. Instead, it is the trash hormone DHT. Furthermore, there is evidence that decreasing DHT by blocking the 5 air enzyme with finasteride may be beneficial in alleviating these sleep problems caused by the trash hormone DHT. DHT. So, to better explain this, let's first look at androgens in general. Research indicates that both too little and too much testosterone can affect sleep quality. In this review article, the conclusion was that, quote, Low testosterone may affect overall sleep quality, which is improved by replacement doses, unquote. On the other hand, quote, Large doses of exogenous testosterone and anabolic androgenic steroid abuse are associated with abnormalities of sleep duration and architecture, unquote. So, if too much testosterone can hurt sleep, is this because of testosterone itself, or is it from the trash hormone DHT, which increases when testosterone increases? Well, not surprisingly, since DHT is responsible for so many bad things that happen in our body, it turns out that, once again, DHT is the culprit here. To back this up, we have this study titled, quote, Testosterone conversion blockade increases breathing stability in healthy men during NREM sleep, unquote. So in this study, we have 14 healthy volunteers who underwent sleep studies. During the studies, the subjects had sleep apnea induced briefly by lowering their carbon dioxide levels. The subjects were then randomized to placebo versus oral finasteride at 5 milligrams per day for an entire month. And then the sleep studies were then repeated. Surprisingly, finasteride improved all the sleep apnea parameters, as you can see, for example, in this figure, right here. The researchers hypothesize that finasteride helps since androgen receptors might be present in the sleep centers of the human brain and therefore lowering the trash hormone DHT in particular might benefit these sleep centers and prevent sleep apnea. They say, quote, Altogether, we interpret these findings as an indication that DHT mediates the effect of testosterone on the apneic threshold, unquote. The authors conclude, quote, we have identified that inhibition of testosterone action via the 5A reductase pathway may be effective in alleviating breathing instability during sleep, presenting an opportunity for novel pharmacologic therapy for the treatment of central sleep apnea in selected populations." Unquote. So, Opposite from the study of the unreliable FAIRS database, this study suggests that finasteride can actually be used to treat sleep apnea. So, I know someone is probably about to write in the comment section right now, but Kevin, what about my neurosteroids? Finasteride is going to mess with my neurosteroid levels, and that's going to give me insomnia or nightmares even. Well, that's exactly what the authors of this study thought they'd find when they designed their study, and that's because they took advice from Dr. Trash. They totally bought into the Dr. Trash trash idea that finasteride causes depression because of the changes in levels of the neurosteroid called allopregnanolone, and therefore it would cause sleep disturbances too. They say, quote, these mood-related effects may be due to decreased levels of allopregnanolone, which has been demonstrated in cerebrospinal fluid in plasma levels of post-finasteride-treated patients. Notably, reductions in sleep spindles, particularly in males, have been associated with depression, which, although speculative, provides circumstantial connections among finasteride's mechanism of action, neuropsychiatric effects, and its hypothesized role in reducing sleep spindle activity." Unquote. So these investigators were convinced that finasteride would ruin sleep, and the way they went about the study was to see if there would be a reduction with finasteride in sleep spindles, which are electrical brain waves associated with healthy sleep. Well, the researchers compared 27 patients taking an average dose of 4.15 milligrams per day of finasteride for an average of 24 months with an age match control group. What they found was that finasteride had absolutely zero effect on any of the parameters that they measured on the sleep spindles. So, the investigators were surprised to conclude that, quote, 
Contrary to our hypothesis, our findings demonstrate that the use of finasteride at typical doses is not associated with alterations in sleep spindles in adult men referred for polysomatography. Unquote. Now, if these investigators had been following my channel, they would know that you never, ever take advice from Dr. Trash before conducting research. They would also have known that finasteride blocks the type 2 5-air isoenzyme, while the brain uses pretty much exclusively just the type 1 5-air isoenzyme. So you wouldn't expect much effective finasteride on brain allopregnanolone levels to begin with. I've already done several videos explaining this in more detail, which I'll link below if you're interested in learning more about why the whole finasteride in my neurosteroid thing is just a complete crock of shit. In fact, if anything, the neurosteroid allopregnanolone may actually be responsible for the psychotic-like behavior that occurs with sleep deprivation. Now, this is just a rat study, but in it, rats were sleep-deprived, which caused psychotic rat behavior. The investigators figured that since there is evidence that finasteride can help with schizophrenia and other neuropsychiatric behaviors, it might help in the specific circumstance of sleep deprivation. Now, once again, like I said, this is just a rat study, and like most rat studies, they use much higher doses of finasteride than what is used in humans. In this case, they use 10 to 100 milligrams per kilogram. Also, as I pointed out in other videos, finasteride is both a type 1 and type 2 5-air blocker in rats, as opposed to in humans, where it is really just a type 2 5-air blocker. That's important to remember, because like I said before, the human brain contains the type 1 isoenzyme, so you'll get a much greater effect on brain neurosteroid levels with finasteride in rats than you will get in humans. But in any case, these investigators were set on trying to prove that allopregnanolone was a trash hormone and in these rats, and that's a pretty interesting objective. What they found was that sleep deprivation increased the amount of 5-air enzyme in the prefrontal cortex of the rat brains. Finasteride was able to counter the psychotic effects of sleep deprivation, as well as other psychiatric drugs like lithium and haloperidol. So, I included this last study just to show that despite the praise allopregnanolone usually gets in the finasteride-hating community, it actually may contribute to sleep deprivation and cause disturbing psychiatric symptoms. Unfortunately, as interesting as this study is, I don't think I can apply the results of this study to humans because human brains are not the same as rat brains, and finasteride has different effects in humans. And also, no one is going to take 100 milligrams per kilogram of finasteride at a time. But it is nevertheless notable that despite the narrative you hear on the hair loss form, that finasteride causes sleep disturbances, the reality is, is that it actually has the potential to treat sleep disturbances, and actual studies in sleep laboratories don't show it causing any sleep problems at all. So, the bottom line here is that there is no good evidence that finasteride causes insomnia. If it exists at all, then it is very, very rare. And certainly the existing research does not at all justify all the fear-mongering about it, since most of it shows that finasteride may actually be beneficial for your sleep. And even if finasteride did cause insomnia, it isn't like insomnia isn't a treatable condition. So regardless of your take on the subject, I personally think it would be very foolish to sacrifice your hair due to some remote possibility of a hypothetical side effect, which may not even be real. So until there is stronger evidence to establish a link between finasteride and sleep disorders, then I think we can all safely dismiss what the fear mongers say about it online, because the burden of proof is still on them, regardless of how much they want to cry about it. Personally, I sleep better on finasteride, because it is very easy to sleep soundly, knowing that finasteride is keeping the slaphead curse under control. So with that, I'll see you all next time, my fellow hair loss witchers. God bless.